Good evening, everyone. I'm Michael Steele in for Joy Reid. And we begin tonight with a track from the Jackson 5. Now, if you are of a certain age, you surely remember the song Never Can Say Goodbye. And if you don't, the lyrics go a little bit like this. I'm not going to sing it, so just calm down. Never can say goodbye. Every time I think I've had enough and start heading for the door, there's a very strange vibration piercing me right through the core. It says, turn around, you fool. You know you love him more and more. Tell me why. Is it so? I don't want to let you go. Okay. Well, that's just about sums up the emotional state of today's Republican Party, as they just can't say goodbye to the big lie. More than two years after Donald Trump lost that 2020 presidential election. So much so that it resulted in the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. And they just can't let it go either, even after their lackluster showing in last year's midterm elections. In fact, The Washington Post reported this week that the GOP is actually planning to ramp up its focus on so-called election integrity activities in states across the country. And perhaps the craziest thing about it all is that, by and large, they know it's all bogus, that there was no election fraud, and that no matter how many times Donald Trump posts something at 3 in the morning, the election was not rigged. It was not stolen. And in fact, they knew that just days after the election. The Associated Press has obtained an audio recording from the head of Trump's campaign in Wisconsin, who admits as much. Say what you want. Our operation turned out Republican or DJT supporters. The Democrats just got 20,000 more than us. But that wasn't going to stop them from denying reality. Here's the drill. Comms is going to continue to fan the flame and get the word out about Democrats trying to steal this election. We'll do whatever they need their help with. Okay, it's just being stand by in case there's any stunts we need to pull. In case there are any stunts we need to pull. And, of course, we saw all those stunts play out real-time in the press conferences, rallies, and dozens of lawsuits across the country claiming that the election was rigged and stolen. There were more than a half a dozen lawsuits in Wisconsin alone that were either dropped or dismissed. And yet, here we are today with Republicans not only still living by the big lie, but actually lionizing some of its election-denying candidates. Beyond Trump, you have the losing Arizona gubernatorial candidate, Carrie Lake, who today still claims she is the true governor of the state. She has been reading from the Trump playbook, no doubt, from the very beginning of her failed campaign. And she's being welcomed with open arms by the party and is even heading to Iowa later this month. And like Trump, she has raised millions of dollars off the big lie since the election. The Republicans' embrace of the big lie has gone international as well, with their support of the latest Florida tourist, Brazil's former president, Yahir, uh, Jair Bolsonaro, who, like Trump, claims his recent election was stolen. And like Trump, his radical supporters assaulted Brazil's Capitol buildings last month. But instead of shunning Bolsonaro, he's headlining an event for the conservative group Turning Point USA Tonight, in Miami. Joining me now is Tara Setmayer, Lincoln Project's senior advisor and former GOP communications director, and Mark Leibovich, staff writer for The Atlantic and author of Thank You for Your Servitude, Donald Trump's Washington and the Price of Submission. Mark, Michael. welcome. Good Thanks. to have you here with me in person so we can throw stuff at the screen together. Let's do it. Given that the foundations of this big lie are well-documented, well-established, well-known, ever-present, mm -hmm. why does it still have such a grip, not just on the GOP, but seemingly pulling the country 
further and further into its grips. It, it is sort of astounding to watch this play out. I mean, I was just watching this report, and I'm like, are we really doing this again? Are we really having to listen to this again? I don't see the electoral value of it. I don't see the political value of it. I mean, it's the, the proof is very much in the, certainly election results. I don't see this becoming a more urgent issue, no matter how many times Kerry Lake goes to Iowa, right? <laughs> right? I mean, it's just not going to come back. Um, I don't know if it's fear of Donald Trump, which is obviously a very big animating force in the Republican Party. I don't know if it's just assuming or just like this complete petrification of, of you know, just sort of bowing before the, right. the the base, like like they need to hear this. We need to energize them. I mean, it just sort of is a reflexive thing at this point. I get the grift part of it. Yeah. I, I get that part sure. of it, because there's a lot of money to be made, because they're, you know, as you know, P.T. Barnum said, there's a sucker born every minute, right? Yeah, sure. But the reality of it is, at some point, it has a price attached to it, a real cost yeah. to the country. Why, why is there this obstinate uh, blinding spot to that? I, I think it's just short-term thinking. And it's also people are blinding themselves to what happened in the last election. I mean, the price to be paid is, is there. It's tangible. Election deniers did really badly in November, right? And I think right now it's a path of least resistance. It's what people know what to do. It's where the muscle memory is when you are trying to appeal to the 30 percent in your base or something that you're going to need. So. I, I don't know. I just think it's a lack of creative thinking. I think it's just fear. I think it's just cowardice. I think it's the same dynamic that we've seen over the last four or five years here. So, Tara, uh, maybe you can... You're always asking me the question, so I've got the <laughs> question for you, right? When did we kick Reagan to the curb? Why, why are we seeing so many Republicans um, more and more fatuated with the, the ideology of Vladimir Putin and Viktor Orban and, and any of the fascists that they can find in Europe? You know, we I always joke uh, and, and say it often because I'm still telling you, come on, Michael, it's warm <laughs> over here. Um, but, you know, I didn't leave the Republican Party. The party left me. And once the party started to embrace the Tea Party and then Trumpism and then obviously the malignancy of Trumpism after all of the transgressions of Donald, Donald Trump, we've seen that the party's unrecognizable now. I mean, Ronald Reagan is spinning in his grave and he would never win a primary election in today's Republican Party. Why? Because Ronald Reagan actually stood against fascism and authoritarianism. And today's Republican Party's fascination with these authoritarians and with fascism, it's consistent with what they're doing now. My good friend Ruth ben Giat wrote the book Strong Men. I encourage everyone to read it. And in there, she talks about how victimhood and um, grievances, that is a toolkit for most authoritarians. It is part of the scam, getting people to believe that, that they are victim, they're being victimized by the system, by whatever. So the idea that Republicans are, are are lionizing losers is just another part of the grievances that authoritarians use because it can deflect from their own incompetence. They can blame their own incompetence. They can blame them being losers and everything else on everybody else but themselves. And the Republican Party is such a personality cult now that they are incapable of course correcting. They have, they've gone down this authoritarian path. There's no turning back. Every opportunity they've had to turn back, they haven't. They've put the pedal to the metal and gone even further and embraced it more. And this is a perfect example who they are lionizing now. It's not Reagan anymore. Right. It's the Orbans. It's the, you know, it's the Bolsonaros. It's Putin. I mean, it is the polar opposite. And that's why at the Lincoln Project, we've started something called the Contract Against Extremism, because people need to understand that these people in the Republican Party are extremists. The extremists now now are the mainstream. And for those people, the 18 or so who are in Biden districts, those Republicans in those swing districts, is this the party they're going to continue to support? Are they going to become extremists as well? Because that's their agenda. Right. People need to understand that.